Hi, my name is Mark Adams, and welcome to the Private Label Report. This is a podcast where I invite you into my office and we talk about all things Amazon Private Label. Pull up a chair. Let's get started. Hi, my name is Mark Adams. I want to welcome you to today's episode. Really, we're going to talk about how to get started as an Amazon FBA seller if you're a beginner. And really, first and foremost, if you're new to this uh, podcast, I want to welcome you here. Normally, I don't do things uh, where I've got an ocean in the background, but uh, actually, I live in Charlotte, North Carolina, and usually you'll see me in my office where the whole premise of this of the podcast is to invite you into my office so we can talk about Amazon. Well, I actually have a, a place at Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, where it's right on the water here, and you can see the ocean crashing in. And I've had a good year recording this at the end of 2017 in November, and I'm actually here, and I've been here for a couple weeks now. I'm going to be here for a couple weeks more. So it's kind of hard not to work that long, but so instead of doing the normal traditional background, I wanted just to, to talk to you here, so please forgive the lighting and the sound. I'm sure it's not as good as all of the other podcasts and things that I do. But to kind of get back to the topic at hand, I really want to talk about, if you're here, you're probably interested in, and a beginner, you're interested in going into Amazon FBA. There's so many things and different things out there. I'm not going to really go into all the particulars, but I really just wanted to try and give you a, a person-to-person scenario of what's involved in being a seller and, and really maybe just talk to you for a second and see it and, and try and help you decide if this is for you or not. Maybe share some of my experiences. And I'm not going to talk very, very long, but I just wanted to maybe give you just a rundown and a perspective that will maybe weigh out some of all the other things that you're, that you're thinking right now. And maybe just answer a couple of questions along the way. But as I just think about this, uh, Amazon selling has been around certainly for a while right now. There seems to be a consensus of people out there right now that it's saturated or a lot of people are in or everybody's doing it. Well, I would say it's actually quite the opposite because, because we're in Amazon every day, all day, you tend to think that everybody in the free world and their brother and their cousin is doing some type of Amazon private label product. Well, I think really Amazon private label sellers as we define them, and we all are, is probably less than one or 2% of all of Amazon's business anyway. So it's still just a little bit of a blip on the radar and there's still tremendous upside in things left. And as far as markets and products and things like that, every time for a second I think that, that just that's a, a certain area is saturated. I'll deal with one of my coaching students and they'll come up and, and have me help them with a the product they're, they're working on. And I would have never thought of that product in a million years, thousand years, whatever it is. And it's just, it always amazes me all of the things that are out there. There are literally millions of products on Amazon, tens of millions of products on Amazon. And those of us who are private sellers couldn't begin to get to all of them in a lifetime. So if you're thinking that things are saturated, I would encourage you to, to think just the opposite. I mean, if you t ever took a statistics class in school and you remember the big bell curve that went up and it went down like this, I still think we're at the very beginning on the upside of the bell curve. So I still think there's a tremendous amount of markets left. Certainly uh, some of them are saturated. However, if you're just thinking a little bit outside the box, you still can find just thousands of markets and products out there. So if that's the case and you think, okay, should I get into it? What kind of money are some of the people making? And again, it, it ranges from zero to millions of dollars. And I guess there is really no average number, but the students and have, and that I have taught and different things just as a range, gosh, I've had just, I don't know how many people who have made 500 to $1,000 a month with very, very minimum and part-time effort who, who just want to have a little bit of extra income, something for some of the extras in life. I've had people uh, replace their income at work and be able to leave work. I've had multiple, multiple people make well into six figures. And I've had one person who has made within their first year, they made over, over a million dollars. So and that's, that's not sales, that, that's profit. So obviously the amount of commitment and investment is different at different levels. But this is a business that I think too, depending on your ambitions and your goals, that if you do what you're supposed to do, you can make whatever you want to make. So, I mean, I have, in my own example, I've gotten to a level where I'm very, very comfortable and I want to be able to enjoy the time and come to the beach and be able to do things and sit there on the beach and drink a margarita if I want and, and have the balance in life of having the money to do what you want, but more importantly, have the time to be able to do it. So you can structure this business any way you want to, to fit whatever it is lifestyle. If you're younger and you got bills to pay for kids to college or whatever that is, that type of thing, 
you can certainly work more and make as much as you want. I'm in an age where I value my free time a little bit more, but whatever it is, you can shape the business any way that you want. As far as the time and effort it takes to do things, I mean, I started my first product for $400, and I think that's lower than most. But I think if you've got anywhere around $1,000, that's a reasonable amount to start. And, and obviously, the more you have, the better. But uh, if you've got somewhere in that one to $3,000 range to invest, gosh, that you ought to be able to do anything you want to get going in, in, your, in your product. Because what I teach in my courses and my seminars and different things is really the whole strategy of this is being able to just to continue to launch products until you get to the point wherever you want to get. And if you can think of something maybe where you just launch one product a month, and even if that product does ends up being somewhere around $1,500 a month, at the end of six, seven, eight months, going forward, if you do nothing else, nothing else changes, you got a $100,000 business at that point. So then the beauty of it too is that your business also is a tangible benefit because it's something that you can sell. And you're seeing these businesses start to sell now for about two and a half times earnings. So in theory, in that example I just gave, you're looking at end of a year, somewhere around $100,000, quarter million on the sale. You know, you could start in January of 2017, be three, three and a half million, or three and a half thousand, hundred thousand dollars by the end of 2017. Maybe you do more. But this is a business that the income is there and certainly the lifestyle is there. And I think too, uh, a lot of people seem to have questions about dealing with suppliers. I find that that's getting easier and easier. I've been doing this about three years now and dealing with suppliers for almost 30 now. But the communication gets faster, it gets easier. You're starting to see things with payments get faster and easier. You're starting to see technology come into this business. And all the different things that make an emerging market start to mature and, and become viable. So if I'm just sitting there, if I'm you and I'm thinking, is this business right for me? And that's something I think you ultimately have to decide. I think there's never any same answer for everybody, but is this a doable business? Yes, a lot of people have done extremely well in this business. And I think really the, the better question for you would be, is this business doable for you? And you know, if you wanna go through with a nominal amount of money, nominal amount of time, have a physical product business that you can create very easily and continue to have income and or sell if you want to down the road, I know of no other business where you can grow this quickly and get to a six figure income other than being a, an Amazon private label seller. So I'm obviously very, very pro much or pro on, on being an Amazon seller and doing e-commerce. And I think in the future, you're gonna see things uh, get even easier as time comes on. But if you're sitting here thinking about this, the amount of risk involved is nominal. I had somebody ask me a question the other day, what happens if I don't sell my inventory? And I had to sit here and think for a second because I really don't think in those types of terms. Because I think if you do everything well, that the chance of that happening will never happen to me. But it, let's assume the worst case, it does happen. You're in a buying a price, say you're selling a product for $20 on Amazon. You probably paid somewhere four to six dollars everything total, including shipping. You're gonna have some Amazon fees in there, but you could you could lower that product to $8.99, $9.99, get your money back. So, you know, the, the amount of risk here is is negligible, especially relative to the upside that it can be. So ultimately, if you're thinking about doing this, I find the, the, the stuff of going and finding a product, getting it listed, marketing, and rinse, wash, and repeat is relatively straightforward. But what seems to hold most people back is the mindset part of this of could I do it, should I jump in, should I not? And I think too, I just think too, but, but if you think through this process, you just, you just, you gotta move forward. Your downsides are slim, and it's just such a good and easy business. And if you decide not to do it, then you know, then that's okay too. There's no right or wrong for everybody, but I just still think it's a very, very good business, and I think it's a wonderful business to start going forward for here in 2017. If you'd like some uh, free training, you'll see the link here on the, uh, on the video, but it's markscottadams.com forward slash free dash training. And that's some videos I put together a little bit more specific that show you some of the things of picking markets, picking products, things I really can't show you here from the beach, but it's free training. Go ahead and take that. Um, and I think that will get you up and running and get you started. So with that said, I hope that uh, that has been helpful as your as that little uh, <laughs> devil angel sitting on your shoulders, if you will, should I, should I not? I hope that helps you come to the decision that's best for you. But Anyway, I appreciate you very, very much for being here, enjoying things at the beach, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks.